Hey guys, Shane here. Time for a rather special unboxing. Uh, this kit was sent all the way from Germany uh, by Mr. Hamilton Barkas. Uh, Michael was very kind to send out this to me, so thank you very much. Sent out a few other bits and pieces too, which we'll be taking a look at and painting up in later videos. But I thought we'd uh, have a look see at this, because I haven't seen many of these knocking around. And that is the M4 High Speed Tractor. This is the 3 inch slash 90 millimeter variant. Um, there are two main variants of the uh, M4 high speed. Uh, there's the 155 mil and the 3 inch. And what that refers to is the type of ordnance these uh, artillery and prime movers were designed to carry. This is a very interesting vehicle. Um, I think only about 14 of them are left running in the world at the moment. So they're quite a rare machine. Um, funny enough, I actually saw a video with the Mighty Jingles driving around one of these the last day. So they're a very nice and kind of modern looking vehicle for their time. Quite kind of uh, retro, if you will. So this is, obviously is from Hobby Boss. This kit was released in 2007, so this came out when Hobby Boss was still pretty new on the scene. And I, I have a quick look in the box, and it's a pretty nice kit. Um, I've also had very good experience with Hobby Boss, so this should not be um, any issues. And the reference number is 82407. And uh, we'll have a look and uh, see what we get in the box. So starting with the instructions, we have our kind of standard black and white exploded diagram. Um, we have the legend for the various um, symbols on the front. On the back we have a pretty nice sprue map. All the parts are numbered, but they are very small. However, it's really good to have it so you know where everything is. We'll have a look and see the steps. I believe this is an 18 step build. And there's quite a bit going on in this, but the instructions seem to be very clear and precise, so it shouldn't be too bad at all. So step one is the suspension. This is the um, the vertical uh, volute um, suspension system, so the VSS uh, or VVSS, or the hell it's called. So pretty nice detail. We have photo wedge grills going in here for the um, lower glazes plate. I would recommend keeping the buggy the buggy assemblies off the tank until you paint it because it it makes life a bit easier trying to paint the hull with them not in place. Step two, we have the mounting of said bogies. Um, again, I would leave these off until later in the build. And then the rubber band tracks. I will actually probably end up using these. Um, I think th this type of suspension is probably one of the few that you can get away with rubber band. Um, there is a small amount of sag on the the uh, vertical volute or volute um, suspension systems, uh, whereas the horizontals has next to none. My well has a little bit depending, but for the most part, it's an active track with the horizontal, which is the one that the Easy Eight has. So the rubber band can work for this type of track. We also have the inst installation of the um, the floor for the driving and crew compartment. And then step three. So step three, we're we're building winch assemblies, and we're adding. Um, Driver, uh, driving equipment such as pedals and the like. Step four, we have the assembly for the engine. This comes with a full engine, or it appears to be quite full, um, which is, a, I think it's a, a six or a, a three part step, I believe, or two part step. So we have the engine, number five, more engine detail. Very, very nicely done. We're adding the seating arrangement for the crew, if you guys can see. Then step six, down to the radiator and cooling system and firewalls for the engine area. Step seven, we're installing the uh, cooling system for the engine and the rear deck or the rear plate. And then we're adding some of the plumbing for the, for the radiator or for the big cooling fan anyway. Step 8 is just um, some of the uh, 
details for the crew compartment, like some of the padding, etc. Um, et They're on to step nine. Step nine is the cabin, the cabin for the tractor, which is one piece. So we have uh, dash details, control panels, what have you. Then we have the large mounting ring for the um, M2 HMG or a 50 caliber machine gun. It's nice that this kit does come with um, pre-cut masks uh, for both sides, which is good. So um, it does, that's a small headache out of the way. Step 10, so we're adding Pioneer tools and storage racks and spare track onto the roof of the cabin. And then we're also beginning to build up the, uh, the side doors, which we can model open or close and again, they have got masks, which is great. Step 11. So we have the 50 caliber machine gun. Um, from experience of the past, Hobby Boss 50 cals aren't particularly great. However, um, there's plenty of other alternatives knocking around. So I'm probably just going to take one from a, a Tasca or a Suka model kit because they're quite good. So we have the 50 cal. We mounted the mounting of the 50 cal, rear few mirrors, the adding of the doors and then the cab being fit to the uh, lower hull. Then we start moving on to the engine compartment, which we're adding like some of the big plumbing areas here in step 12. Step 13, we're adding the roof to the engine compartment, and we're beginning to build the storage compartment at the back of the vehicle. And step 14, again, the construction of the storage area at the back have the option for the tailgate to be open or closed and some scale chain is included as well that's very nice and step 15 so 15 is basically the final step and as mounting these rather large photo etch grills to the engine compartment which is the access to the engine compartment so even though there's a full engine i am i'm not entirely sure you're going to be able to see too much of the actual engine once those we also get a full colour painting guide. It's pretty simple. Um, colours are in Mr. Hobby and Mr. Colour. And it's just basically olive drab, steel and silver. Very simple. Um, some nice decal markings um, on this vehicle as in like the various caution signs and what have you. So moving on to the rather large photo etch fret we get. This is quite impressive. You don't even get this in many Dragon kits now these days. Um, so we get our two engine access panels or um, doors, the big uh, grills. We have various other ventilation grills and the shields for the headlights. On the back we have some twine for the winch and some small chain for the tailgate. In the so next small bag we have our decals, quite thick. Imagine these are ones they've made themselves, so it, it is quite thick. However, they are quite sharp considering. So it'll be interesting to see how these behave on the model when we come to build it. Hopefully uh, it, they will behave and work for us. Then we have our little pre-cut masks. Very simple jobs, but um, they should do the job. If not, I can always make them out with Tammy tape anyway. So we start with one of the bigger assemblies, which is the cab for the tractor. Mold it one piece. Now bearing in mind, when Trumpeter built, or not Trumpeter, uh, when Hobby Boss built these, they were pretty new. And the molding is actually quite sharp, it's quite crisp. Some very minuscule flashing here and there, nothing really to discredit the kit in any way. Quite sharp in some regards, sharper than some of the Asuka stuff I've seen, which is uh, that's saying something. We have the big area here where our machine gun um, mounting ring fits, and then we have a little bit of detail on the inner side. We do have pin marks um, here and there, but they're kind of out of the way, so we shouldn't see them. The lower hull tub. So we do have pin marks on the sponsons. They will probably have to be filled because I think they will be visible. However, we do have full detail on the lower hull, which is very nice. 
Trax! These are the final rubber band style. Uh, the type of track this is eludes me at the moment. Uh, I can never remember the name for the American tracks because there's so bloody many of them. Um, we do get some rather annoying pin marks on the inner face. Asuka Models has the same problem and these can be an absolute nightmare to remove. So moving on to the sprues, we get two of the A sprue, which is the bogies and the road wheels. Detail is pretty nice. We do get a lot of um, um, casting tabs on the parts that will require cleanup. Pretty nice though. Um, I'm not seeing anything really, um, any real flashing or any sink marks, which is good. The detail looks pretty good. And we get two of these. Moving on to the larger sprues, there's sprue B. We have quite a bit of detail on this, so we have radiator and ventilation detail here. Look pretty nice. We have some of the door detail with some bizarre attempt at what makes it look like canvassing, as these would have been a canvas door. So um, they've kind of put a little bit of like a wavy texture into the doors. I don't know whether you can see that. We have the the floor of the driver's compartment by the looks of it. Some fire steam sure and uh, they look like torsion bar or torsion um, bars for the um, idler. We need the very, very large engine block, two parts. Details a bit basic, but a lot of it you won't be seen. Then we're moving back into engine detail, a little bit of very small flashing here and there, nothing too crazy, which is good. Now we're moving into <clears throat> now we're moving into the final drives, which are tuses, which is um, a nice little detail. Various other engine cons uh, components. Some very heavy flashing on the pinfoil mount for the M2 HMG. But again, uh, I intend to replace that anyway, so it doesn't really matter. The uh, 50 cal itself, it's not the worst in the world, actually. I, I, it doesn't look as bad as some of the other ones they've done. Um, it is usable if if you're in a pinch. Um, I'll probably still use uh, an Asuka or an Academy one. I believe this is the engine compartment roof by the looks of things. A lot of the inner faces do have pin marks so um, you might have to consult the instructions to know which ones you can have to fill and which ones you can leave. East Brew. This seems to be mostly the cargo assembly so we have some um, kind of um, so we have some grid work here. Not entirely sure that's going. Uh, we have the the doors for the cargo area. They're pretty nice, though. I'm sure if I flip it over, there will be some sink marks or pin marks, shall I say? We have our our dry sprockets. Pretty nice detail. Everything is quite sharp, I have to say. Our return rollers. Again, very nice. The rear of the crew, co or not the, the rear of the um, cargo compartment where the um, tailgate is. Well, if I flip it over, so you get a lot of pin marks. I hope you guys can see. So there's quite a few pin marks on this. And because this is going to be exposed, you're going to probably have to fill quite a bit of this. It's a bit of a shame, but both Hobby Boss and now their parent company, Trumpeter, are both like this. The final big sprue, quite a bit going on in this one. This is C sprue. So we have a lot of engine and transmission detail here. 
Again, detail is very nice. I'm not seeing any sink marks and only a little bit of flashing on certain very small parts. We have the suspension arms for the um, idler wheel. A lot of interior detail here. And so far, so good. We have the large mounting ring for the 50 cal, so that sits up on the um, the cab roof, and the, I imagine this ring fits inside it. We also have a fold tripod for the 50 caliber. We have some um, radiator detail, like the little spinny wheelie hook. I'm not I'm not really a petrol head, so a lot of the terminology for engines is well beyond me. And uh, a few other little kind of interior details, a few storage bins, this plate that sits on the floor of the, in between the driver and the guy that sits beside him. Some of the kind of benches, I think these are the leather padded benches that the guys sit on inside the, the crew cabin. It's more just like a block, but uh, with a little bit of clever paint work, you, you can make that look pretty convincing. We have the instrument panel. We do get decals for this, so that's not too bad. <clears throat> Again, some more fire steamers. And then back here we have some of the Pioneer tools. So in all detail it's pretty nice. I'm actually quite impressed with this. It's going to, I think it's going to build up to a very nice model. And then finally, our last sprue is a very small clear parts. Um, they do appear to be a little bit cloudy, but I can kind of see, I can see well enough through them, and there's a slight magnifi uh, magnifying effect. However, that's nothing uh, to get too excited over. There's a little bit of polish, and they will look just well. Or if you want to put like a dust layer on them, anyway, it won't matter. So we have our headlights, our little windows for the doors. The two big oval um, or el elliptical kind of um, windows for the uh, front of the vehicle, which are hinged. So I, I can imagine they can like like the uh, the seven ton half track and the femo eighteen tonners that uh, the front window can pivot open. I think these can as well. Just looking at these uh, hinge detail here, and that is my quick look at. Hobby Boss's M4 high speed tractor. In all, I think this is going to be one hell of a cool kit and it's going to make a very unique and cool addition to any Allied vehicle collection. As I'm beginning to get more and more to Allied armor, especially the M4 Sherman, um, I think this might go along very nicely. So I'm already thinking of a few dioramas, po possibilities with the, with the Sherman collection I have, maybe to incorporate this somehow. So again, I want to say a very big and humble thank you to Michael. So thank you so much again, my friend, for sending these out. It was, it was a very, very kind gesture. And uh, hopefully in the very near future, you'll be getting a package from Ireland as well uh, with some of our sugary goodness. But uh, again, thanks very much, my friend. So guys, I hope you uh, enjoyed this inbox review. It's something different. I haven't seen too many of these knocking around. And uh, if you are anyway kind of curious or were unsure whether to get this or not, I would strongly recommend so. Um, it's a good kit, great photo etch, and it should build up into a very nice little representation of the real vehicle. Thank you for watching, guys. Stay safe as always, and watch out for those buses. Bye-bye.